A popular suggestion in the comments on our recent video looking at the 7 best footballers currently playing outside of Europe and China was that we do a video on the 7 greatest footballers of all time that never played in Europe. Now, this video comes with a rather large disclaimer that ought to be really quite obvious. For around the last 4 decades, the best footballers on earth have tended to flock to Europe at some stage in their career and typically the English, Spanish, German, French or Italian leagues. They are where the money is, that's where the exposure is, and that's just the way the game has gone. Now, the result of that is that just about every world-class Brazilian, Argentinian, Uruguayan, Colombian, or Chilean during that time has ventured to the continent of Europe. Meaning, the most of the best footballers who have never played in Europe played a good while ago. So for any of you watching who consider anything prior to about 1995 to be prehistoric and that there might as well have been dinosaurs roaming the field of play, yes, I know you're out there, then this isn't the video for you. If the demand is there, we could well do the best current players who have never played in Europe in the future. But for now, we're interested in the greatest of all time. Here are the 7 greatest footballers to have never played in Europe. Jalma Santos Getting us started in 7th place is a man who made our HITC7's all-time 11 in the right-back position. It's fair to say Jalma Santos could play a bit though. An impenetrable defender, as strong as an ox in the tackle, and tireless up and down the right flank, Santos is one of only two players alongside Franz Beckenbauer to have been named in three separate World Cup Team of the Tournaments. Santos played for three different clubs over the course of a 22-year career that began in 1948 and ended in 1970, and they were all Brazilian clubs. Best known for his nine years at Palmeiras, Santos won three national and three regional league titles with the Sao Paulo club, and he passed away in 2013 at the age of 84. Adolfo Pedernera Back in the 1940s, the best club team at least outside of Europe, but I think we can quite confidently say in the world, was the River Plate side known as La Maquina, or The Machine. The team dominated during a golden era for football in Argentina, but they were particularly renowned for their front five. Playing with a fluidity, intelligence and technique the opponents just couldn't live with, all five were shortlisted for the seven, and in at sixth is Adolfo Pedernera. A wonderful technician and passer of the ball, who was tenacious, creative and prolific as an inside forward, following his glory days at River Plate, Pedernera went on to play in another legendary side, a Millonarius, in Colombia, that would be nicknamed the Blue Ballet. Pedernera was the marquee signing that signalled the start of a number of world-class footballers descending on Colombian football during the El Dorado era. The likes of Alfredo Di Stefano and Neil Franklin followed, and now seems like a good time to shamelessly plug my book, England's Greatest Defender, The Untold Story of Neil Franklin, which is packed full of stories about Pedernera and that era of football in both Europe and South America, and is now available to pre-order from www.englandsgreatestdefender.com for the price of a cup of coffee and a sandwich from your local Starbucks. And unlike those two, it will give you hours of enjoyment rather than a mere moment of satisfied hunger or quenched thirst. Nilton Santos We began this seven with the man who we consider to be the greatest right back of all time, and in fifth place is the man we consider to be the greatest left back. Teammates in a legendary Brazil side that won two consecutive World Cups, and teammates in our all time 11, whilst both were obviously brilliant, Nilton Santos was the pick of the two. A pioneering left back who revolutionised the way in which the fullback position is played through the expansiveness, energy, and attacking intent of his game. Santos was an immaculate and scrupulously fair defender whilst also being a fantastic attacking outlet down the left flank. He spent his entire career at Botafogo. Jose Manuel Moreno We're now four players into this seven, but those four have essentially come as pairs. Nilton Santos and Jalma Santos played together in a wildly successful Brazil team, and our next entrant Jose Manuel Moreno played alongside Adolfo Pedernera in that all-conquering River Plate side. Whilst all five forwards in that side were noted for both their individual brilliance and their joyous interplay, Pedernera and Moreno were the stars. Jose Manuel Moreno was so good in fact, that some Argentines of a certain vintage maintained that he was better than Di Stefano, Maradona or Messi. A maverick withdrawn forward, renowned for his incredible natural ability, party lifestyle and aversion to training, Moreno was a showman and a genius on a football pitch. Like Pedernera, he also later played in Colombia, <coughs> by my book, <laughs> it's really interesting, and he was in fact the first footballer to win league titles in four different countries. None of those countries were in Europe though, so Moreno is eligible for this seven. Jose Andrade 
The only holding midfielder I know of to have been almost universally acknowledged as the best footballer on earth at one time, Jose Andrade was one of football's first global stars. The star man in a Uruguay side, which won two consecutive Olympic gold medals and a FIFA World Cup, Jose Andrade was a former shoe shiner turned carnival musician, and he controlled football games with all the grace and ease that conductor leads an orchestra. At the Paris Olympics in 1924, Andrade became the first black footballer most Europeans had ever seen, and he quickly established himself as the best footballer they'd ever seen as well. He cemented that reputation in 1928 and 1930, but never played club football in Europe, playing almost exclusively in Uruguay, barring a brief stint in Argentina. Garincha Whether Garincha is the greatest winger of all time probably only depends upon whether one considers Cristiano Ronaldo to be a winger in the classical sense of the term. Considered by many to be the finest dribbler of a ball in the sport's history, Garincha beguiled defenders and delighted spectators with his joyous invention, wondrous technique and incredible agility. Garincha gave Brazilian football nine years of unadulterated joy before alcoholism that had plagued his father before him took hold of his life. Garincha technically had six different clubs, but he only really played serious football for Botafogo. The Honourable Mentions We'll keep it brief with the Honourable Mentions, starting with two Brazilian legends who were the stars of their respective eras. Prolific centre-forward Leonidas, who scored 21 goals from 19 caps for Brazil and is often credited with inventing the bicycle kick, played predominantly for Flamengo and Sao Paulo, and only passed away in 2004 at the ripe old age of 90. He was followed by the equally celebrated Zezinho, who is widely considered to be Brazil's finest footballer before Pelé. A star of the 1940s and 50s, Zezinho was unfortunate in as much as his international career ended in 1957, a year before Brazil won their first World Cup. A complete footballer, but a particularly brilliant dribbler and midfield goalscorer, Zezinho played primarily for Flamengo and Banco. Whilst one all-time great Brazilian right-back made our seven, another missed out and that was the country's 1970 World Cup winning captain, Carlos Alberto Torres. The next best thing to Jalma Santos, Alberto Torres was even more attacking as the fullback role had started to evolve thanks to his predecessors. He scored one of the all-time great World Cup goals in the 1970 final, and is best known for his time with Santos and New York Cosmos at club level. Last, but not least, we do actually have a non-Brazilian honourable mention you'll be delighted to hear, and he is also probably one of the 10 greatest centre-backs to have ever lived. That man is Chile legend Elias Figueroa, a three-time South American Footballer of the Year and six-time South American Defender of the Year, who played most of his club football in Uruguay and Brazil. Right, that's it for the oral mentions, now it's time for your incredibly predictable top spot. Pele In top spot, quite obviously, is Pele making it four players from Brazil's joint 1958 and 1962 World Cup winning squads in this seven, Pelé actually went one better and became the first and today the only player to have won the World Cup three times by adding a third title in 1970. Five of this seven also made our all-time HITC 7's 11, which shows how many historically great players never plied their trade in Europe. Pelé is arguably the greatest footballer to have ever lived, combining athleticism, intelligence, technique, invention and ruthlessness in front of goal with both his feet and with his head. Pelé was probably the best footballer in the world at the age of 17 and there's quite simply no other player in history who was anywhere near that level so young. He scored roughly a goal a game for Santos over the course of his career and wasn't far off that with Brazil. Pelé came second in our list of the 100 greatest footballers of all time, but compelling arguments can be made for putting him top. For reasonably watchable and largely fact-driven information about the Brazilian legend, feel free to check out our video that should appear on your screen on the end screen any second now. Right, so that's it for today's video. That Pelé video should be on your screens now, along with our video on the 100 greatest footballers of all time if you so wish to watch them. Thanks for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and as always, I would of course be eternally grateful if you subscribe to HITC7s and turned on notifications if you don't already. We've got some great videos in the pipeline. Much better than this rubbish anyway.